The more we learn about this Equifax debacle, the worse it looks. Turns out the credit monitoring company was hit with another data breach in March, months before the gigantic hack that exposed the personal information of 143 million Americans. Same hackers both times. Talk about a sleep at the wheel. Listen, I know regulations become a kind of a dirty word on Wall Street, but when businesses behave this irresponsibly, at some point the government has to step in. That's why I think now is a critical time for us to hear from Senator Elizabeth Warren, the Democrat from Massachusetts, who has some strong words for Equifax, as well as for the Federal Reserve when it comes to the actions of another company that's misbehaved, Wells Fargo. Senator Warren, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right, Senator, I've got to ask you something I asked rhetorically last night, but I think you'll have an answer. How the heck does Richard Smith, the CEO of Equifax, still have a job? I don't know. I don't know. But here's what I do know. So long as there is no personal responsibility when these big companies breach consumers' trust, steal, let their data get stolen, cheat their consumers like they did in the case of Wells Fargo, then nothing is going to change. As long as they can keep collecting their paychecks and they can keep sleeping cozy at night, then we're going to have the same kind of thing going on in these big corporations where the customer is at the end of the day. And let's face it, stockholders are at the end of the day, too. It's all about the executives. If we want change, then we got to hold the executives accountable, period. Can you haul those board, the members of these boards down to Washington and ask them personally? Because you know they seem to say nothing, and they get away with it. You embarrass them, and they will take action. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So I've asked for hearings on both Equifax and another hearing on Wells Fargo. You know, we had a hearing a year ago when John Stumpf, who had gone on your program, first one out of the barrel and said, hey, listen, I take personal responsibility for what's gone wrong at Wells Fargo. And then it turned out what personal responsibility meant was firing thousands of people who made 15 bucks an hour. You know, so we got John Stumpf in front of us, asked a few questions. Stumpf is no longer the CEO of Wells Fargo. But let's face it, there are still a lot of folks running Wells Fargo who were there at the time of the crisis. I want to do this with all of these big corporations. I want these big corporations to understand that when you engage in massive fraud, when you are so irresponsible with the data that belongs to consumers, when you put your customers at risk, there's going to be real responsibility for you. And until that happens, until people lose their jobs, until we have criminal investigations, until there's a real chance that one of these executives is going to be walked out of the office in handcuffs with people snapping pictures, then nothing's going to change on Wall Street, not in these big companies. Well, Senator Warren, this one in Equifax, it seems that they knew for a long time. They did nothing. There are 140 million people right now in this country who may have their identities being, being stolen. They have our Social Security. Where's the outrage yeah. besides you? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, here's the deal about stealing your Social Security. They've now got my Social Security, my birthday, where I live. They can sit on those data for a long, long time. So, you know, we're all revved up about it right now. We shut down our credit. We watch very carefully for what? A month? Three months? Six months? Maybe a year. But boy, those key data will still be out there for stealing our identity next year and five years from now and 10 years from now and 20 years from now. This is a massive fraud on the American consumer. And it is not enough simply to say, oh, there's going to be a fine imposed on the company and shareholders are going to pay a little money. We really need to take a close look at the oversight in general of these credit reporting companies. But we also need some accountability for the executives themselves. True at Equifax, true at Wells Fargo, in my view. Well, let's talk about Wells Fargo. We have an organization in this country. It is called the Federal Reserve. It is supposed to be that. monitoring these things for us. Is Wells yeah. Fargo bigger than the Federal Reserve? You know, this is what really gets me. Uh, we know that the Federal Reserve could remove the board of directors of Wells Fargo. I had Janet Yellen in a hearing very recently, 
And Chair Yellen said yes. She acknowledged that the Fed has the power to do that. And look, Janet Yellen is somebody who's gotten out there. She's talked about the importance of protecting consumers, about the importance of an economy that works well, not just for those at the top, but for the rest of America. Well, this is the Fed's chance to step up and say, when you cheat consumers, when you open fake accounts, when you force place insurance on them that they don't need, when you charge them money that they don't owe, then we, the Federal Reserve, are going to say those who are in charge, those who are responsible, are gone. We can't trust you to run a, country, a company of this size. I really want to see the Fed step up here. The Fed has the power to do it. They just need to step up and do it. No, this is not a Republican or Democratic issue. This is three nope. million people. We thought it was only a million people. Three million accounts. We thought it was only a million accounts. Is it necessary to put a special master on the board of Wells Fargo to change that culture? You know, it's. A, let me start by saying, how about we get rid of everybody who was there in charge when it happened? That's gonna. That's gonna send a pretty important signal to Wells. But I think you raised the right question, Jim. About so who does go on? How is it that Wells Fargo uh, Wells Fargo organizes itself in a way that brings any credibility to the idea that they actually are following the law? Can you imagine that that is our standard now? That's what we're asking for. Just don't break the law. Don't cheat people and defraud people. That's what we're asking for here. And we're asking Wells Fargo to come up with a way to reassure the American public and the government officials that have oversight that that is so. We can start there by holding the people at Wells Fargo who were there when this happened responsible and getting them out of those jobs. Were you surprised at the incredibly long Sherman Sterling report that it really just fell down on, on one person, Carrie Tolstead, and everybody else got a pass? Yeah. Uh, come on. Although, even when you read through that report, notwithstanding that they want to make it all about one person, you read that report, and that report just identifies one systemic failure after another. I know. And always keep in mind with Wells Fargo, this was not Wells Fargo's first rodeo on this. Wells Fargo, four years earlier, had already admitted that it had set up compensation schemes for its employees that forced these employees to go out and encourage these employees to go out and sell uh, predatory mortgages, principally in African-American neighborhoods, in Latino neighborhoods. Wells Fargo paid a fine for that and said, we're cleaning up our act. We're going to change how we supervise. We're going to change how we deal with our employees so nothing like this happens again. Nothing like this happens again. At the same time, they're starting to open the fake accounts, and they're squeezing their low-level employees to make that happen. And then since this uh, uh, was first came out that Wells Fargo had opened all these fake accounts, and John Stumpf sat in front of the banking committee and said, uh, this is it. It's all in a box. This is, this is the only problem we've got. Everything else is working well, right? He said that, and then it turns around, no, actually, that's not so. They have a problem on their auto loans. They have a problem on their home mortgages. And they had even more fake accounts than they had originally admitted to. I, this is a company that, from the very top, has made it clear this, there's no accountability here. This is not about serving consumers. This is all about quarter by quarter by quarter how to juice the reported profits, that that's what mattered at Wells Fargo. And if they had to step on, you know, a few hundred thousand families, uh, a few million families in order to get there, well, then that was a price that Wells Fargo was willing to pay. That should not be something that the Federal Reserve should be willing to go along with. All right. Well, Senator Warren, I hope that you'll come back when we get some sort of justice here, because right now it seems like it's just you and me talking. Well, we're going to keep it up, though. All right. Thank you so much. That's Elizabeth Take Warren, care. United States Senator of Massachusetts. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much. Good to see you. May have money's back here for the book. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.